Queen Elizabeth II has died at the age of 96, with the royal family's official Twitter account confirming the news this evening. Express.co.uk explores what happens now as the country mourns the much-loved monarch and prepares for a new phase in the monarchy. Earlier today, it was confirmed that Queen Elizabeth II died at the age of 96. In a statement, Buckingham Palace said, the Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. The Queen was the oldest and longest-serving British monarch in history, serving the country and the Commonwealth for over 70 years. The statement added that the King and the Queen consort will remain at Balmoral this evening and will return to London tomorrow. Her eldest son and heir apparent, Charles, began the process of taking on some of the monarch's responsibilities a few years ago, perhaps most notably earlier this year when he attended the state opening of Parliament in her place. Now, as the royal family and the country mourn the great loss, Express.co.uk explains what will happen in the coming days, following the tragic death of the Queen. According to Politico, internally, the day of the monarch's death will be referred to as D-Day, with each following day leading up to the funeral known as D plus 1, D plus 2, and so on. What follows is the plan through to D-Day plus 10. In the hours after the Queen's death, a call cascade took place to notify the Prime Minister, the Cabinet Secretary, Britain's highest-ranking civil servant, and a number of the most senior ministers and officials. Liz Truss was informed by the Queen's private secretary, who then told the Privy Council, which coordinates government work on behalf of Her Majesty. Then, the royal household issued an official notification to deliver the news to the public. A call script for departmental permanent secretaries, which outlines how to break the news to their ministers, was seen by Politico. It reportedly instructs the secretaries to say, we have just been informed of the death of Her Majesty the Queen, after which ministers will be told that discretion is required. Ministers and senior civil servants will then receive an email from the Cabinet Secretary, a draft which reads, Dear colleagues, it is with sadness that I write to inform you of the death of Her Majesty the Queen. Following this, flags across Whitehall will be lowered to half-mast, with the aim of all flags being lowered within 10 minutes. The UK Parliament, as well as each devolved Parliament, will break off following her death, and if not sitting, will be recalled. In the age of social media, many of the immediate actions are related to the online world. The royal family's official website will change to a black holding page with a short statement confirming the monarch's death. The UK government website will display a black banner at the top. Similarly, all government departmental social media pages will show a black banner and change their profile pictures to their crest. Dot plans for the Queen's funeral will be announced by the royal family. The service is expected to be held 10 days following her death. Dot the Prime Minister will be the first member of the government to make a statement, with all other members instructed not to comment until after Ms. Truss has spoken. Dot gun salutes at all saluting stations will be arranged by the Ministry of Defence and a national minute's silence will be announced. Under initial plans, the PM was expected to hold an audience with Charles, the new king, and at 6 p.m., the royal would then deliver a broadcast to the nation, but given the timeline of events, it is unclear if this will be moved. The same goes for an expected service of remembrance at St. Paul's Cathedral, where the monarch's platinum jubilee service of Thanksgiving was held earlier this year. Attendees will include the PM and a small number of ministers. D-Day plus one dot at 10 a.m. on the day after Her Majesty's death, the Accession Council, which is made up of senior government figures, will meet at Street. James Palace to proclaim King Charles the new sovereign. Hundreds of privy councillors, including the PM and senior ministers, will be invited to attend. Charles will be confirmed as king in a proclamation read at St. James Palace and the Royal Exchange in London. 
When Parliament agrees on a message of condolence to the royal family, most business will be suspended for 10 days, and MPs will offer tributes at the House of Lords. Then, at 3.30 p.m., the PM and the Cabinet will hold an audience with the new monarch. D-Day plus 2. The Queen's coffin will return to Buckingham Palace. Her Majesty died at Balmoral Castle, her royal residence in Scotland, meaning Operation Unicorn will be activated. The coffin will therefore be carried to London by royal train if possible, if not, Operation Overstudy will be triggered, meaning the coffin will be transferred by plane. The Prime Minister and his cabinet will travel to meet the Queen's coffin at St. Pancras Station. D-Day plus 3. In the morning, King Charles will receive the motion of condolence at Westminster Hall. He will then embark on a tour of the UK, starting with a visit to the Scottish Parliament and service at Street. Giles Cathedral in Edinburgh. D-Day plus 4. King Charles will continue to Northern Ireland, where he will receive another motion of condolence at Hillsborough Castle and attend a service at Street. Anne's Cathedral in Belfast. At the same time, a rehearsal will take place for Operation Lynn, the procession of the coffin from Buckingham Palace to the Palace of Westminster. D-Day plus 5. Operation Lion will take place, seeing the coffin travel from Buckingham Palace to the Palace of Westminster along a ceremonial route through London. There will be a service in Westminster Hall when the coffin arrives. D-Day plus 6 to D-Day plus 9, and Whitehall worries. The Queen will lie in state at the Palace of Westminster for three days. The public will be able to visit her coffin, which will lie on a raised box known as a catafalque in the middle of the hall, for 23 hours per day. Dot on D-Day plus 6, a rehearsal will take place for the state funeral procession. Dot on D-Day plus 7, King Charles will travel to Wales to receive another motion of condolence at the Welsh Parliament and attend a service at Lyon Def Cathedral in Cardiff. This period is expected to see the greatest difficulties for the government and foreign office, as the logistics of the funeral begin to set in and things like state visits, arrivals of VIPs from abroad and public transport all spill over. Politico stated, in a striking assessment of the scenes that could unfold, one memo warns of the worst-case scenario in which London literally becomes full for the first time ever as potentially hundreds of thousands of people try to make their way there, with accommodation, roads, Public transport, food, policing, healthcare, and basic services stretch to breaking point. Concerns have also been raised about a shortage of stewards for crowd control purposes. It added, the Prime Minister and the Queen have agreed that the day of the state funeral will be a day of national mourning. This has also led to planning issues. The day will effectively be a bank holiday, although it will not be named as such. If the funeral falls on the weekend or an existing bank holiday, an extra bank holiday will not be granted. If the funeral falls on a weekday, the government does not plan to order employers to give employees the day off, the documents say that is a matter between employees and their staff. D-Day plus 10 will be the day of the Queen's funeral, marking the start of a new royal era.